Hello, gang. Happy Monday. So I'm back at the falls, Niagara Falls in Ontario, Canada today. Beautiful day today. It's sunny. So let me share this. So hello, hello Tiffany. It's a beautiful sunny day in, uh, at the Niagara Falls. Hello Sherelle. Share this here. Um, I think that's about it for sharing. So, hello guys. Hello, hello for the falls. It's beautiful here. Perfect day to be here in uh, in Niagara Falls. Welcome. Welcome to uh, honeymoon capital of the world. Lots of people come here for their uh, weddings and uh, or hon honeymoons, I guess. So, anyway, it's a beautiful day. I'll let you look before I start to teach and speak. Sun's out and it's shining. Seagulls flying. Imagine taking a bath in that. It's kind of cold right now since there's snow down there. Anyway, beautiful place. Beautiful place. Hello, a helmet from the Philippines. Welcome, welcome. All right, so today, this is the day after Easter. The Lord wanted me to talk about how God is uh, raising up no names to become spiritual giants to deliver those with names and with titles that are already established in the church and in ministry, that there's a lot of people out there that aren't uh, set free yet from the spirits of Jezebel, Leviathan, and they're very prideful and they're not uh, helping the Lord's kingdom. So, so last year, on Easter, the Lord had me, I was out in California, and he had me go out to the Sequoia National Park where the big trees are at, the giant trees, the sequoias. And uh, I remember driving up to the very top of uh, Sequoia National Park where the tall trees are at, and they have a tree there called the General Sherman. That's the tallest tree apparently in the world. It's like 275 feet tall. It's like huge. And... Uh, when I went there, I got a picture taken in front of it, and it said General Sherman on it. Well, when I was driving away, the Lord showed me a vision of it. Instead of saying, you know, S-H-E-R, it said S-C-H-U, and then man, General Schumann, which, of course, is my name. And then he spoke to me and said that that's what he's going to have me do, is to start to raise up an army of end-time deliverers all over the world to get people set free from the Jezebel, Leviathan, and Ahab spirits. So I, I took a picture of it and I superimposed my name, my initials, changed uh, the second, third, and fourth letters of Sherman to Schumann. So I'm going to show you what it looks like. There it is. So there's the name. And there's the tree and me. It's huge. So, when I saw that, I thought that was, uh, at the time I didn't know exactly where I was going to be headed, you know, with all of that, and at the time I had not started training people. I didn't start training people until like around September, September and October of uh, last year, 2017. But now we're in full force as we are bringing on new people all the time. Um, late last week we brought on our first... Uh, deliverance team member from the country of Australia. Um, I'm gonna, her name's Megan. We're going to be bringing on a second one. His name's Wade shortly. 
And so we'll have two people in Australia that will be on the team. We have uh, people right now in the Philippines. We have Helmet. We have them in Canada, John Lawrence. And we're getting ready to pick up some more here in Canada because we just did a training this last weekend. So it's exciting to see this growing. I'm going to be doing my first uh, training with the uh, deliverers in May, May the uh, 6th. And uh, looking forward to that. So, so anyway, it was kind of interesting because, um, you know, last Easter I was out there in the Sequoia National Park with the giant trees. Well, then this Easter, the Lord told me to go to Toronto. I had never been to Toronto, the city of Toronto before. I think it has like 2.7 million or something in it. And they have, um, if you're familiar with 1994, the Toronto Blessing that had broken out where uh, the Holy Spirit presence was really powerful and strong and started affecting people that came. People, uh, Randy Clark was kind of like in charge of it then and uh, it's what spawned the uh, Brownsville, Revival Brownsville Assemblies of God in Pensacola, Florida. Some of you may remember that. And then Lakeland, Florida, uh, Bill Johnson from Bethel um, had come out there and he was affected. So it was a pretty powerful outpouring that's really affected the rest of the world. So I went there on uh, Easter yesterday morning and the Lord told me to basically bring some of my books so I could pass them out to some of the senior leaders. So I get there, I walk in the front door and uh, there's a lady that greeted me and it was very nice and told me that they were going to be doing some baptisms you know, that morning and so I um, remembered I, you know, I forgot to get my water so I came back and got my water, came back in and the Lord told me to ask her you know, who the uh, leaders were so I could uh, pass on the books to them. Well, then she told me that she was married to the, the senior leader. Her name was Sandra, and his name was Steve. And uh, they were basically in charge of the church, which is called Catch the Fire. And so I was thinking, well, that's pretty crazy. You know, she actually greeted. That's, that's what I'm looking for is people that are humble enough to uh, serve, you know, and not think that they're all that. So it really spoke volumes to me of uh, the people that are in leadership at Catch the Fire. So then I ended up uh, getting settled in. I sat in the third row in the center and I saw her, she came in and she put the books, you know, somewhere around her seat in the front row. And Well, then the next thing I know, there was another woman that uh, looked over at me and motioned for me to come over, so I did. And then she told me she noticed my books and that uh, she was from Quebec, which I, I know Montreal is like six hours away from there. And she asked if she could purchase you know, one of my books. And I was thinking, what? You know, I'm a nobody. I'm a nothing. You know, you don't know who I am. And uh, yet, I guess, apparently she uh, might have heard of me, I think, from Facebook. So anyway, um, I was able to give her one of my books. And uh, the, the service was tremendous. They did a lot of uh, baptisms. A lot of the people that were not even planning to get baptized came forward, which was really cool. Well, then after the service... The Lord said, I want you to go down to the tower, which they have a tower called the CN Tower that is really tall in Toronto. A lot of you might have seen it. And I went there not knowing much about it. I did some research like I normally do, and I found out that it used to be the tallest structure in the world for like something like 26 years. And uh, then uh, it's now the third tallest, but it's the tallest in the Western Hemisphere. And again, the Lord kind of was showing me when I went up to the top of that to make some declarations over, you know, the city of Toronto and the province of Ontario and the country of Canada, taking authority over Jezebel and Leviathan and Ahab and releasing, you know, a Holy Spirit presence and exposing the truth and stuff. So um, when I did that, the Lord reminded me that, you know, I went, I took you to the tallest tree in the world and now I took you to, a, you know, one of the tallest structures in the world. You know, that is something like 181 stories tall. It's huge. 550 meters. I think it's, I don't know, 1,400 and some feet or something. Uh, it weighs something like 10, no, 130,000 tons. I mean, it's huge. So I thought that was kind of interesting. And again, he kind of showed me. He said, that's what I'm having you do is to raise up these spiritual, spiritually strong giants to help this world get delivered. And I'm uh, raising up people who are no names and no one has heard of before that didn't have ministries before in order to bless them so you know those I'm not saying that all of those that are leaders obviously that are in the church or ministries have uh, pride but there's a lot that do 
and the Lord's uh, using Restored to Freedom and our team members to help people get delivered from that so that they can totally be freed because Christ is coming back for a pure and spotless bride. So anyway, it's pretty, uh, pretty cool um, what the Lord continues to do. And again, I just uh, had messaged, uh, exchanged some messages back and forth with a woman uh, this morning, in fact, that's from South Africa. That'll be the first South African that's been uh, certified under Restored to Freedom. So if you've not been certified yet and you want to help join this movement and help others in your area to get delivered, then I encourage you to. Simply matter of uh, going to Restored to Freedom on the uh, page, my Facebook page, and then watching the four one-hour videos that I have, and then reading the books Restored to Freedom and Waking the Lion Within that you can get on Amazon in either paperback, Kindle, or Audible, and then um, getting the School of Ministry training guide. And the Lord will connect you. I mean, I'm seeing people all over the place. I've got some people in New York City seeing tremendous success seeing people out in Washington, tremendous success. And it's growing, so all the time. And it's great to see it. It's awesome to watch. Um, let me see here. So, um, yeah, let me talk a little bit about the weekend. So this weekend I was in Niagara Falls, Ontario, and I did a corporate-wide deliverance on Friday night. And there were several uh, amazing miracles that came out of that. One woman um, said that her face, I guess it always had pain in it. And when she went through the last prayer, the Ahab prayer, the pain left immediately when we commanded those spirits to go. So how cool is that? Um, also, there was a couple that went there and they were having a lot of strife in their marriage and both husband and wife went through it. I believe they were from India. And uh, he went home that night and they had no strife at all. And the next day, no strife at all. And it was like they completely got set free and changed. And uh, he actually yeah, came back the next day and uh, wanted to get trained so that he could help other people. So, so cool testimonies were happening. In fact, Saturday night, when we were done, there was uh, several people that approached me, asked me if I could come speak. They have a large Bible study group on Wednesday night in St. Catharines, um, Ontario, which is north about 20 miles, I think, from Niagara Falls. So I'm going there Wednesday night now at 7 o'clock. And then uh, this weekend, I'm going to uh, Elmer, uh, A-Y-L-M-E-R, Ontario, which is two and a half hours west of here in uh, Canada, to do another Friday night deliverance and Saturday training. So God's uh, starting some fires here, starting some huge revivals. They've been prophesied that the Niagara Falls region is going to have some huge, huge revivals break out here, and they really believe that this is going to spawn a lot of it because when people get pure and righteous before the Lord, then it happens. So they can't contain themselves. Um, 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 um. So Isaiah 59 19 says, So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. So I love that verse. Again, it's Isaiah 59, 19, love 19. You know, what represents the flood? But you can take a look right here. Isn't that beautiful? Beautiful, beautiful backdrop here. So in the, in the home that I am staying in, in Niagara Falls, in the neighborhood <laughs> last night, I just happened to be driving a different way. And I noticed on my GPS, it showed that there was a park. So I went to the park and as I'm driving by it, it said Mount Carmel. Mount Carmel Neighborhood Park. And I was thinking, oh my gosh, how funny is that? Because when I used to live in Indiana, I lived in Carmel, Indiana. And the Lord you know, spoken to me several times about the significance of Carmel, and Mount Carmel in particular, is because, of course, Elijah had the showdown with uh, Jezebel and the Baal prophets and defeated Jezebel in Mount Carmel, which I've been there in Israel. It's way up on high. You can see Megiddo down below. You can see the Mediterranean Sea. 
off to the side and I was thinking how funny is that I come all the way to Niagara Falls and in the home I'm staying in they have a neighborhood park called Mount Carmel so very cool very cool stuff but again the emphasis on today is that if you want to be a part of this worldwide movement of getting those set free from Jezebel Leviathan and purifying the church, purifying the leaders that are in the church. You know, a lot of them are very prideful, not all of them, but there's a whole group. That's what draws in, is uh, they like that, looking up, having people look up to them, you know, and, and it's a very prideful Leviathan spirit that they have. So if you want to be a part of this, I encourage you to join, you know, and to help others get set free. So... It's exciting. It's exciting to see people that uh, have never had ministries before that are now busier than all get out, helping people you know, in their churches, helping people around the world getting set free. I get phone calls all the time. So yesterday, my TV show um, on Uplift TV, it's uh, 3 o'clock Eastern, 3 to 3.30, you know, 2 o'clock Central, 1 o'clock Mountain, and noon on uh, Pacific Time. Inevitably, after that show goes off, people start calling, people start emailing, saying, help me, help me, I need deliverance. This is the first time I've ever heard this. Well, starting next Sunday, this coming Sunday, I'm going to start actually doing deliverances on air. I'm not sure if any other ministry has ever done this or tried it before, but it's going to be powerful. If i got 28 and a half minutes to do it, and I can do it. I've done it. I'm going to do four straight weeks of that, so people are going to get set free around the world by watching it. So how exciting is that going to be? So again, uh, my schedule this um, Wednesday, I will be in St. Catharines, which is north of Niagara Falls, 7 o'clock. And then Friday and Saturday, I'll be in Elmer, A-Y-L-M-E-R, um, at the Malahide Community Center. I believe it's in Springfield, um, Ontario. Then, um, let's see what's happening. Then uh, April 15th, tax day, I will be in Sandusky, Ohio, back in the United States at the Eagle's Nest Church. And then April 20th, Friday, I'll be in San Angelo, Texas. 21st, I will be in uh, Kerrville, Texas. April 22nd, I'll be back in San Angelo doing again deliverances and trainings. And then, uh, I don't think where I'm gonna be, it's, uh, um, 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 oh, I might be in College Station April the 22nd, or 6th, I'm looking to confirm that. And then I will be in uh, San Antonio, May the 4th and 5th, and then doing our certified training for those that have been certified under Restored to Freedom on April the 6th, that night, Sunday night. And then uh, I'm just confirming I'll be back in College Station uh, May, no, June, June the 22nd through 24th at the Glory Hub. Um, Pastor Dewet Stein, he is actually from South Africa but he's now a pastor uh, in College Station. So anyway, lots of stuff is happening. People are getting set free. People are being raised up that are no names, that the Lord is uh, using them because they have a pure and spotless uh, you know, heart. They don't have the pride that they used to have. And the Lord is humbling those that do have pride. It needs to happen. So anyway, I'll let you take a look again at the beautifulness of this place. Those are the American Falls over there. And then these are the Canadian Falls over here. The horseshoe, they call it. It's beautiful. A lot of honeymooners come here. It's about an hour and a half south of uh, Toronto. Toronto's across Lake Huron. So, anyways, uh, thank you very much, guys, for joining today at the falls. Have a great rest of your day. As the sun peeks out here. And keep you all peace on. Keep your joy on. Keep your purity on. 
Alrighty, we'll see you later. Bye bye.